the seat. My eyes began to well up with tears as I watched my daughter stand at the altar. It was finally over after eight long months. Not that I was crying. It was simply that all those pent-up feelings were starting to pour out. She is and always will be my little child, but as of today, she is also going to be Gary's bride. The way she gazes at him makes me think of the day, 25 years ago, when a different couple made their vows of love at the altar. Although the promise of unwavering love has faded and they are now at ease with one another, the couple is still together. The word comfortable has no restrictions. They embrace, kiss, and even engage in what was referred to as the big nasty back then. However, if the truth were to come to light and one of them was no longer in the picture, the other would still be crushed, but not to the same extent as it would have been, say, 10 years previously. They are therefore at ease. God, that word is starting to annoy me. With her left hand flailing and yelling at the top of her lungs that she was engaged, Linda burst through the door, nearly tearing it off at the hinges. Then she and my wife Jean talked nonstop for a long time without once looking away from the ring. About twenty steps behind her, Gary entered and closed the door. He was grinning, but it was a restrained smile. Do you have anything to share about yourself? I inquired, observing the continuous disturbance in the kitchen. He remarked, I guess you know I asked Linda to marry me and she said yes, as he watched me in hopes of getting a response. I thought you two would end up just living together just like everyone else these days. Your daughter said without a ring on her finger there would be no cohabitating so, I figured it was time to make my move. She sounds like her mother and let me guess, you haven't talked her into letting you slide into home base yet either, have you? He twitched and appeared incredibly anxious, as though his mother had discovered him tinkering with himself in the restroom. What do you think? I grinned, saying yes and thumping my fist inside. All those late-night conversations, I suppose, weren't in vain. Well Gary, the next couple of months are going to be hell on the both of us so prepare yourself. The women are going to try to drive us nuts, and my suggestion to you is to get that damn smile permanently tattooed to your face. Just remember one thing, a wedding doesn't a marriage make. After the ceremony, the reception and the honeymoon, reality is going to set in, and that's when the hard work begins. You're going to find out soon that marriage is nothing like dating, and it sure as hell is not all peaches and cream. So, after you've had your second or third big fight you're going to question yourself whether you made the right decision marrying my daughter. I've got two bits of advice, take them or leave them, but I'm going to give them to you anyway. Number one, always treat her like she's the most important thing in your life and second, never let the honeymoon end. Gary, the honeymoon only ends when you let it. He looked at me kind of strange but I knew he'd understand, not now, but in about nine months. Mr. Moore, I was going to ask you for Linda's hand but she told me that no one does that anymore, and besides you didn't own her, he admitted with a smile. But I do love your daughter, and I'll do my best to keep her happy. Gary, there is no such thing as trying to make someone happy. If you treat her like you want to be treated, it will just happen. Now comes the hard part. We've got to go into the kitchen and face two crazy women with a smile on our face. Just nod your head, say yes sweetheart to whatever they say, and with a few beers under our belt we'll get through this night. And that's what we did. I would have signed a blank check and taken a cruise around the world or gone fishing for eight months in Canada if someone had informed me what the two of them were about to put me through. Jean, you've got a budget of $15,000 and that's it, I stated to my spouse. That should be more than enough to give Linda the wedding and honeymoon of her dreams. Steve, do you have any idea what things cost these days? The dress alone could cost upwards of two grand and don't get me started on the food or the guest list. I don't think she was very happy with me at the time. Honey, listen to me. I won't go to the poorhouse over this wedding, it's not going to happen. Why don't the two of you make a tentative list of what you need and we'll all sit down when it's done. Two years prior, I had witnessed my elder brother make a big impression on his daughter. Hell, they even drove a white carriage driven by horses when they got to the chapel. I was informed that her custom gown cost him more than $5,000, and despite his initial goal of having no more than 250 guests, the number had skyrocketed to more than 375 on the day of the nuptials. And given how much alcohol everyone was drinking, I'm sure his bar tab must have been well over $4,000. People appear to drink a lot more when there is free alcohol available. Rumor has it that the two of them are now experiencing problems. A wedding does not equal a marriage, as I have stated. Holy crap, was all I could say after looking over the two-page list that my wife and daughter had compiled. Three grand for a damn wedding planner. What do we need a wedding planner for? I replied. They make sure everything goes smoothly and that everyone shows up on time. If I hire a caterer I tell them what I want and what time I want them there. We sign a contract and if they screw up I don't pay, it's as simple as that. My daughter answered, well, Connie had won and everything went great. My darling, Connie had a budget bigger than the one used to make the movie Titanic. I attempted to inject some comedy into the conversation about the budget that was spiraling out of hand. And if my idiot brother wouldn't have had his head up his bottom, he wouldn't have had to borrow from his 401 Kelvin to pay for the wedding. I'm not going to do that. Sarcastically, she responded, Fine, I'll get married in the backyard wearing a sackcloth dress. In hail, I told myself, Relax, this is not reality, or shouldn't be. Look, give me a couple of days to review this extensive list. 
Nothing has to be done today or tomorrow so we have time. I've got a lot of connections in town and more than a few people owe me favors I'm now going to collect on. They weren't pleased but they had no other option. My wife told me, as we were getting ready for bed, that she is your only daughter, Steve, even though I know it's a lot of money. And she's using Connie's wedding as a guide on how she wants hers to be. I guess she doesn't want to be outdone by Connie and I can understand that. Dale went into debt $32,000 between the wedding and the honeymoon. Why don't we give them a check for fifteen dollars and a big party and call it square? This way they'll have money for a down payment on a house, we'll have a nice party and we all will come out of it better off. The way she looked at me drove crazy. All I'm saying is just do the best you can and I know you will. After getting into bed, she opened her book and began to read. After observing her for a few minutes, I asked if she would like a foot rub. Steve, it's not a foot rub you want to give me and we both know it. It's late, I'm tired, and you've got to go to work tomorrow. Maybe we'll find time this weekend, she murmured while pecking my lips. What happened to our previous level of passion? I can recall the moment when one goodnight kiss turned into two, and then into a whole lot more. After taking off their clothes and engaging in their favorite activities, two worn-out individuals laid there grinning and cuddling till they passed off. That's what I considered to be a goodnight kiss. She said it again, Steve, maybe this weekend, as I kind of passed out. You never used to say that, I said to her in a whisper. Jean kissed my forehead quickly and returned to her book, saying, Well, back then we went to bed right after dinner and didn't have the responsibilities we have now. Go to bed or you're going to be cranky in the morning. The next few months were the worst. I felt like I was the target of hate from everyone on the planet for the things I was doing or not doing. I had to take half days off work to haggle over prices for food, flowers, and the hall. Linda became extremely upset when I began removing people from her guest list. Gary, how are things going for you? As we sat with drinks on my back porch one Sunday afternoon, I said, Am I still the penny pincher? Mr. Moore, he began, but I interrupted him. Hi there, I'm Steve. Hell, we're going to become family in a few months. Kindly give me a call at Steve. All right, Steve, I wish we had eloped because I know Linda isn't happy about a number of things. She nearly took my head off when I made the mistake of advising her not to worry about the small things. Gary, please make me the antagonist. We can play good cop, bad policeman with them both in this fashion. He smiled at that. After this all goes down, you're going to be the one living with her, not me. So like I said, make me the bad guy, I've got big shoulders. Have you looked at her countdown calendar and planner? Linda and Jean discuss every little detail at least twice a night. She said she wouldn't have had to worry about every little detail if you hadn't been so frugal and had instead given her a wedding planner. I took action only for that purpose. The more things they're thinking about, the quicker time will pass and the less time they'll have to focus on the two of us. Drink up, because if we know what's good for us, we should be in charge of supper tonight. After T-17 days, we encountered our first significant issue when the drummer we had hired broke his arm in a car accident. Since it was too late to find a replacement group, I called a friend of mine who DJs parties. A day later, we had a DJ to spin music for us, and Linda and her mother had prepared a list of songs they wanted him to play. Wow, weddings have become so difficult lately. As we lay in bed, I said to my wife, do you remember our wedding? Only our family, a couple of friends, and the preacher were present. Those were the days when my family made all of the meals from scratch for the reception at my parents' house. Steve, we had 50 people, Linda is going to have 135, that's a big difference. Everything else is merely fluff, save for her two best friends and the two families. Basically, it's folks from both of their workplaces who couldn't really give a tinker's damn and others who have invited them to their weddings. They're not coming because they care about the two of them, they're only coming for the free food and drink. You're probably right, but it's her wedding not ours. Not that I didn't enjoy it, being with my wife was always wonderful, but over the last couple of years the raging fire had become a pilot light, and I wasn't happy about it. That night, for the fifth time in three weeks, I was shot down. We were now doing it once a week at best, and that was usually a quickie. We all arrived at the church on time, the hall, flowers, and caterer all performed as planned, and with two plane tickets in my tuck's inner pocket, I wandered around the church biding my time until the ceremony began. The rehearsal and dinner that followed went off without a hitch, and despite the chaos that started early on the wedding day, everything turned out okay. I smiled and added, Gary, if you want to call this off, I'll give you five grand and a half hours head start. Mister, I simply want it finished with, more, er, Steve, and our real life back. I apologize, but it is not going to occur, those days of ease are long gone. It's us now, and it always will be, until you go away. It's no longer about you or her. Wait to have children until you've had some time to appreciate your marriage, or you're completely insane. Before you decide to lock yourself down with rug rats, go, have fun, and live. I promise you that they will transform your life. There won't be any more picking up and heading to a show or dinner. The baby will let you know that's not going to happen. There will be car seats, backpacks, and sleepless nights when all you want to do is close your eyes for a brief moment. It is your mutual responsibility to live a bit before then. I was alone with my kid in the rear of the church at precisely 20 minutes to go. 
I kissed her on the cheek and said, Honey, you look beautiful, just like the angel you were in that first grade play. Are you ready for this? She straightened her dress for the umpteenth time and added, Dad, I've been ready for this my entire life. I love Gary to death and I can't wait until I'm all his. I'm sorry I've been such an ungrateful woman lately, it's just that I wanted everything to be perfect on this day. And it is sweetheart. With a mixture of happiness and sadness, I gave my daughter to her future husband as the music began to play and we walked down the aisle together. Nobody messed up their vows as they had during the rehearsal, and the minister spoke everything that needed to be said. When they finished kissing, I leaned over to give my wife a kiss and tell her in a whisper how much I love her. Now that the difficult part was over, the newlyweds strolled back down the aisle beaming. After congratulating the two of them as they went through the line, they were taken to the reception. The majority of the following four hours were spent with pictures, food, and music. My wife danced with our new son-in-law, and I danced with my daughter. I grinned endlessly at photos that, after being placed in an album, would be tucked away in a drawer after a year and a half. The photo of my wife, daughter, and I was the one I desired above all others. I warned the photographer not to mess this one up, so he took four extra to be safe. While I watched others finish their drinks, I remained sober. I had already instructed the bartender to stop serving anyone who were intoxicated. Some of the people he cut off were taking it easy. Nobody wanted to be arrested for driving under the influence while returning home. I was the perfect host as everyone complimented the wedding on how lovely it was. Gradually, the attendees departed, bidding farewell to Linda and Gary before coming to find Jean and me to express our gratitude for the invitation. After hiring two cousins to carry all the gifts to their apartment, they were prepared to leave by 11.30. Gary had complete control, but Linda didn't feel any pain. In the morning, I arranged for a limo to transport them to the hotel and then to the cruise ship. I reasoned that the two of them needed seven days apart, away from everyone, to wind down. After a quick handshake, a hearty kiss, and an embrace, they were gone. I smiled broadly as I thought back to our wedding night. Just as everyone other for the previous millennium had done before them, they would figure it out. As a joke, I considered handing them a package of protection, but my wife told me she had made sure Linda was taking her medication months previously. Great minds, I suppose, think similarly. With everyone now gone, the only people left were myself, my brother, his wife, Anne, and my wife. I drew Anne aside and inquired if she had fulfilled my request. She nodded her head, smiled, and kissed me. You guys better get out of here, she whispered. We'll make sure everything gets cleaned up. Jean, let's get the heck out of here, shall we? I'm tired and need to unwind. How about you? I absolutely agree with you. I'm just glad it's all over. I led her to a limo that was somewhat off to the left as we exited the hallway. I wasn't sure what condition we'd be in after the reception so I rented this, she responded. My wife asked, sitting back against the seat, Boy, you sure did think of everything, didn't you? It was a nice wedding, wasn't it? She said, Our little girl is now a married woman, and I believe this made her cry. Well, it'll be just the two of us now, do you think you'll be able to handle it? After saying, I'll try my best, I uncorked the bottle of our preferred wine and poured a glass for each of us. To us, I replied, placing my hand over her wine glass. This is nice and I had such a great time even though I was worried something was going to go wrong. I should have known you wouldn't have let that happen. Jean discovered that we had been driving for almost 30 minutes after we had each drunk two additional glasses. Boy, it's sure taking a long time to get home, what are you paying him by the mile? She quipped. Jean's windows were darkened, and she had no idea what was going on, but when she heard the planes overhead, she gave me that familiar look. I said, here, let's finish this bottle, as I poured the last of the liquid into her drink. She gulped down the rest of it as the limo came to a stop and said, to our new life. He exclaimed, Mr. Moore, we're here, as he got out of the vehicle. By the time we got out of the rear seat, the driver had already taken the suitcases out of the trunk and was checking them in with the porter. I grabbed a leather rucksack and gave everyone some $20 bills. We'll take that one with us, I remarked. Steve, we're at the airport, a startled Jean exclaimed. Good, you're still sober. Now let's get a move on, our flight leaves in a half hour and although we're checked in, we still need to get to the gate, I remarked while holding her hand. How frequently do you witness a woman in a fancy gown and a man in a tuxedo hurrying through an airport? Given that most folks gave us more than a cursory glance, I suppose we left an impression. I told Jean that I would tell her everything once we were on the plane, but she persisted in asking me the same questions over and over. To where? was her question. You'll see, but for right now let's get a move on. They were just beginning to board the aircraft when we made it through security and to the gate. We boarded the aircraft after walking down the hallway after I gave the gate agent our two tickets and driver's licenses. We were seated in first class, third row. I assisted her into the window seat, placed our backpack in the overhead bin, and took a seat across from a woman whose eyes were as big as dinner plates. I took out my own seat belt, adjusted it, and clicked it into place. Better buckle up, we're going to be taking off soon, I replied. Wow, we just made it. Made it to where? Steve, you're starting to scare me. Where are we headed? 
I may have spoken a bit too loudly when I said, we're going on our honeymoon silly, because the older couple across the aisle was now staring at us. I said, as you can probably imagine, it's been a hectic day for us, and the man told his wife that we were recently married. That is really unique. His wife informed us that the two of you look so elegant. We're headed to our honeymoon cottage, we just left the reception. She insisted that she wanted me to herself, even though I wanted to take a cruise. I grinned and added, who am I to disagree with my new bride? She nudged her spouse and murmured, Sweetheart, remember, don't try to wear him out the first night. Oh my god, Jean exclaimed as she sank into her chair in an attempt to blend in. The elder couple told the cabin steward that they had recently gotten married and were going on their honeymoon, and she brought out a small bottle of champagne for them. She said, on behalf of Delta Airlines. Now, everyone in our vicinity joined in. People inquired about our outing duration, the details of the wedding, and whether we intended to start a family. We'd known each other for a while, and the wedding had been amazing, but we weren't sure if we wanted children, I simply told them. We might be a little too elderly, I informed them, but my bride wanted one. What the heck, you should give her a child if she wants one, and she's 33. She's not too old, the woman pointed out to Jean. It looks like I'm 33, she said, smiling. Do you think I look that young? She was 35, I said, leaning over the seat to thank her for the compliment. After finishing the bottle, Jean felt a great sense of relief as things became more normal, and we stopped being the center of attention. All right, we're on the plane, where are we headed? On our honeymoon, where do you think we're going? Steve, I offered the kids two options for their honeymoon locations. They're here because they both chose the cruise, they wanted an Eastern Caribbean seven-day cruise. The alternative option was far more isolated and distant. We're heading there, so I'm relieved that didn't appeal to them. But where? Too many questions. Honey, would you not like to be taken aback? Not really. I gave her a gentle kiss and told her I adored her. The older woman said to her, Dear, hang on to that man, I think he's a keeper, as Jean once again vanished into her seat. When we got there, our ride was waiting for us. She was now aware that we were on an island in the tropics, but I had saved the best for last. After driving through dense vegetation for around 45 minutes, we emerged onto the coast and entered a guarded resort area. There were still supported huts jutting into the lake, and Jean appeared unsure of my actions when our driver placed our belongings into a tiny boat. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. They stored our clothes and unpacked our baggage. They left one boat for us so we could reach the shore after I gave them a tip. Two questions before we do another thing, she stated with an almost demanding tone at this point. Where are we? In the Bahamas on a small private resort island. How did you find this place, and who in the hell packed for me? That makes three questions, but since you've been such a good sport, I'll let you ask them. It was listed on a website featuring the world's most romantic locations. I won't reveal the cost or the contents to you, you'll find out those details on your own. Anne and Linda provide the alternative response. Your entire wardrobe, from sundresses for dinner to swimwear, is brand new and made just for this location. Therefore, don't you think it's time for us to switch from our formal dress to something a little more informal? My outfit consisted of shorts, a sleeveless t-top, and sandals. Steve, the C's are things a 20-year-old with a hot body would wear, not someone my age. Babes, there are a total of eight couples on this island who you'll never see again, so, why don't you go with the flow? I let my wife deal with her problem. You look so hot, and if we didn't have to check in I'd take you right where you stand. You don't think it looks a little too revealing? I drew her into my arms and kissed her, saying, not in the slightest. Before she said we should probably move on, I guess my hands did kind of start to wander about all the uncovered parts. Oh no, foiled once more, but just for now. The resort resembled a paradise in the tropics. We selected our favorite dishes from the menu, and since I had previously informed them of our preferred wine, a chill case was waiting for us. Our huts received breakfast and lunch, but the main complex area served dinner. Also offered a late night tour around the island every other night, and also possessed a variety of water sports equipment. The room service was provided 24 hours a day, and they demonstrated how to utilize the two-way radio. Do not hesitate to contact if you need anything at all. We wish you a memorable stay here, our resort host said to us. After consuming some fresh fruit and spending the rest of the night in the air, we returned to our hut. We could chill our hut in two different ways. We could open all the windows and doors and run the ceiling fans, or we could close all the doors and windows and run the air conditioner. I offered her the choice. We told her, I guess since we're in the islands, we should go native, and she opened up to us completely. It was nearly all beds in the bedroom. After taking off all my clothing, I lay down on it and peered up at the mosquito netting. It was bigger than a dual king. Jean gave me a glance and, I suppose, considered her options for going to bed. She probably said, what the hell, and went to bed as well. I was about to attack her, but I suppose the past 48 hours got the better of me because I passed out before I could even become aroused. I woke up without knowing what time it was because we'd locked our cell phones, wallets, and watches in the lodge. Hell, I inspected my wife's body as it lay next to her while I watched her. I hadn't seen her like this in a very long time, even in the bright light, she was still stunning. 
I did exactly what I knew she would want, albeit much more slowly than usual, without saying a word or asking if she wanted to joke about. That's the dinner bell, my darling. Dinner will be ready in 20 minutes, I replied, planting another peck on her lips. I'll race you to the shower. After we had bathed each other, I was beginning to get hungry even though I would have loved to go back to bed with her. We walked down the pathway lit by ticky torches after taking the little boat to land. Two more couples were present, and two more appeared when the dinners were brought out. Each of us gave a brief introduction. The other two couples were honeymooning as well. We all ate, joked, and probably drank more than we ought to have, but at least nobody was driving tonight. After supper, the honeymoon couples left, and we spent an additional hour interacting with the other two. One of the women mentioned, there are two other couples. We were informed that they wouldn't be dining with us the first several evenings anyhow. She laughed, I wonder what they're up to. After about 20 minutes or so, we broke up, and I took Jean by the hand, suggesting that we take a stroll on the beach. After approximately 10 minutes of walking, we came upon a massive net hammock hung between two palm trees. Grinning at one another, we hopped in and relished the soft swaying as we held hands and watched the moon rise over the lake. Before I saw them, I heard them. The sound of two persons laughing and splashing in the waves as they ran up from the water's edge. When they paused and began to kiss, I could see they were nude even in this poor light. Jean said, in a whisper, that perhaps we ought to steal away as they settled into the beach. It took us no more than 20 minutes to figure out what they were going to do next. About 15 minutes later, when they stood up and began strolling along the beach, there were the muffled shouts, and then ultimately laughs. Oh God, my spouse exclaimed. Do you think they saw us? Not likely, I think they were a little busy. I couldn't tell if it was any of the couples from dinner, it was too dark. Is it important who they were? That's all that matters, that they had fun. Do you suppose they'll give us another show if we hang around for a while? She murmured, come on, as she pulled the two of us out of the hammock. After returning to our small boat, we arrived in our room in a matter of minutes. They had made our bed and turned it down for us. A cold bottle of wine and two rose-colored glasses were situated next to the bed. I was lying on a chair, my arms wrapped around my wife's waist. I leaned very close to her and kissed her neck. When I slipped the sundress over her head, I noticed that she appeared to be wearing a thong. I feel like I have a wedgie going on, she added, removing it from between her butt cheeks. This is all they packed. I took it off of her while kneeling and hurled it out the window. The issue has been resolved. For the next five days, you are not required to wear any. Her response was something like in your dreams. We made our way to the bedroom. She leaned over and gave me a kiss after the first glass. It's good to have this. This time, you really exceeded yourself. The best is yet to come. For the next hour, we made love while sipping wine. Tonight, all I wanted to establish was that she was the most significant person in my life and that I loved her more than I had ever loved anyone. Not needing a clock or watch was pleasant. Until the sun rose, we slept. In what felt somewhat like an outdoor shower, we took showers together. The shower head's diameter required to be two feet. It resembled doing laundry outside during a light downpour. Breakfast was ready and waiting for us when we came outside. In an attempt to hide, she asked, do you think they saw us? And if they did, do you care? Steve, I don't usually flaunt my figure in front of others other than you. I didn't even hear them, Christ. Do you not believe that they ought to have knocked? Had they been heard by us? I don't think so. In addition, I believed you mentioned becoming a native. To her dismay, I drew her over to the table and we ate al fresco. We lived the life of a newlywed couple for the following two days. She looked happier than she had in years. This resort was very much worth the money. We spent two hours cruising around the island after supper, and we kissed more than we talked. Our host, Peter, invited us all to the brightly lit hut about 15 feet away the next evening after dinner. We all stood up and went to follow him. He asked that we assemble closely, and we were each given lays made of tropical flowers. This is a unique evening that, if one is fortunate, one will only experience once in their lifetime. This is a romantic, love-filled, and dedicated evening. I grabbed a startled Jean's hand and stepped forward. Jean, you are the greatest thing that has ever happened to me, and I have loved you for the most of my life. You complete, whole, and most importantly, make me happy. I couldn't imagine living without you, and I certainly couldn't survive it. That's when I went to my knees and took out one of her old rings that I had had reworked by a jeweler. Will you do me the honor of marrying me again? Everybody stood by. She was crying as she answered yes and everyone applauded. There wasn't much fanfare, and the ceremony was brief. Everyone toasted to us, congratulated us, and expressed their wish that they would remain as content in the years to come as we were. I told you we were on our honeymoon. That evening, after I had been gone for two nights out of town, she assaulted me the same way she had the first month of our marriage. She treated me to a fast one that was just amazing and drove me to the point where I had to cry uncle. This was our night and there was nobody else in the world save the two of us tonight, no matter what occurred years later. Good morning, Mrs. Moore, I planted a kiss on her lips as I awoke. She turned to face me and whispered, I like the sound of that, as I brought my lips to hers. This is our last day here, what is your pleasure, madam? Trying to be cute, I said. All I want is to stay here with you. 
We did just that when I said, I want us to sit out on the deck and just enjoy the water, the view, and each other. On the final night, everyone showed up for supper, including the AWOL couples. We expressed our sadness at having to leave early the next morning, and we toasted our host and each other individually. After bidding each other farewell, we double-checked to see what time our shuttle to the airport was leaving. Under the starry sky and the soft glow of the moon, we had a passionate kiss on the deck. I considered going to the beach, but I was told that there was a perfect bed available, so this girl wasn't going to have sand up or you know what. Perhaps next time, I said to myself. That night, we didn't sleep at all. By the end of the day, all we could say was that we were dead weary. Jean returned to society, or as she described it, the real world, wearing a sundress and a thong. That evening, we collapsed by simply tossing our soiled clothing into the hamper and leaving within 20 minutes. I said, morning, as I watched my wife, still in her bathrobe, descend the stairs. You want a cup of coffee, please? This morning, I searched for our breakfast before seeing that nobody had brought any. If you're hungry, I can make you a bagel. She lowered her robe and set down her coffee cup. All she had on was a white thong. Come upstairs, I know what I want for breakfast. Three months have passed since our return, and we're still residing on the island. Even if we don't do it every night, we are still spending more time together. She told everyone who would listen about our second honeymoon and congratulated Anne for her wardrobe selections. After around six months, my workplace had an evening supper, which we attended. I was about to cry when I heard something that Jean was saying to my boss's wife, possibly about that resort. Jean advised her, the honeymoon only ends when you allow it to. Ours will continue long after we are both gone because we will spend eternity with each other. It doesn't get any better than that. My comment, a loving wife without an actually affair. I have not done these in a while, not sure if you guys would like a non-affair story or not. Some of these women are still out there. Comment down below if you enjoyed it and I got a second one coming later in the day.